Previously on Life on a Big Flat, in part one, I mapped out my great-great-grandfather Alex Gardner's homestead property, which is right here. This would later become his daughter Helen's homestead property, and Helen would go on to marry a man named Frank Berggren, who had his own homestead property right here, and Helen and Frank's family would live on this homestead and raise all their children, one of whom was my grandmother. So that is a very quick introduction to where we are right now in this map. Today we are going to add one more location to this map, and it is actually not a homestead property, it is something new. In this series, I'll be mapping out the homesteading community where my grandmother lived in a desolate area of northern Montana. I'll be going through all the photos, all the family stories, all the memories, and putting them here on this map to get a better idea of what life was like on the big flat. So in all my family stories and all the memories that we have written down, and in a lot of photos, there's mention of a place called Silverbow School, which is where my grandmother went um, for, I guess what you could call elementary school. I don't know if it was called elementary school back then, but it was a primary school way out in the big flat where my grandmother and all her siblings went when they were young. Here is a very cute photo of my grandma and her sister. I want to map Silverbow School because it is mentioned in so many stories, it is in so many photos, and today we are going to try to place it in this homestead map. So the first mention of its location that I can find is actually in this photo that a distant relative posted in our family genealogy Facebook group. She took a photo of this book because that's my grandma. Um, but then I noticed that down here it actually gives the location, the plot of land that Silverbow School was located on. So you know what this means. We are going to go to the Bureau of Land Management General Land Office Records website, or BLM Glow as I call it. So here we are on the BLM website. Um, I also previously did a whole video on how to find a land patent by either your ancestors' names or the land description. In this instance, we're going to use the land description down here um, because the photo gives the land description. So it'll just be a really quick little tutorial. If you haven't seen the other video that I did, um, that one is a bit more in depth, but here is just a quick search on BLM. So we are operating in the state of Montana and the county of Blaine. Now we're skipping this obviously because it was a school. It wasn't a property owned by a person. So we have the, looks like it was Township 36 North, Range 23 East. So let's put in Township 36 North, Range 23 East. No, 36 North, oops, no, Range 23 East. So we have Township 36 North, 23 East, and the section. Section number 16. So let's put that in and search. Okay. As you'll see, there is one result, and it has a lot. It looks like this <laughs> This was the, the state of Montana <laughs> that took out all these land patents. <laughs> Click on the accession number, and oh my golly good lord. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. But luckily, I know a way to get around that. So scroll back up to the top. What we're going to do is see I, if you'll notice, we have a specific township and range that we put in, but for some reason it gave us back all the different townships and ranges, as well as all the different counties, even though we specified Blaine County. So we just have to go through and find the actual township range, section number, and county. See, it also gives different section numbers. Although we specified section 16, it gives all these different section numbers. So we just have to go back through and find Township 36 North, 23 East in Section 16 in County Blaine. And once all those line up, we should find what we're looking for. And remember, we also have the aliquots. I think it said the southeast quarter of the southeast quarter. So we have all the information, we just have to go through and search for it. But if you'll notice, these are 
in order of township and range actually. So we start at five, six, seven, eight. So we just have to scroll down to 36. Wow, this is a long scroll. Montana is a big state. Okay, here we are in 36 North and you'll see they go up by the range, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're looking for 23. So 36 North, 23. And there are two of them. One is in section 16 and one is in section 36. We're looking for section 16, Blaine County. This is the one we want. So to see where it actually was located, we go over here, we click this square, and then typically the map would pop up right below it, but because this is so long, we have to scroll all the way to the bottom. And here we have the location of the place where Silverbow School was on. This is where it was. The southeast quarter of the southeast quarter. So that means that once we scroll into this little section here, if you divide it in quarters, just pretend, and then we want the southeast quarter, so that's this quarter, and then we divide that in quarters, and we want the southeast quarter of that. So Silverbow School should have been located right here. Let's just map that and see what happens. So we're back on this map, and luckily this one is a little bit easier to map because if you will look back here, we have the street names Hallelujah. So we're looking for where West End Loop meets Kleindworth Road. And I believe that should be right here. So here's Kleindworth. I think I remember from when I mapped Frank's Land a few videos ago that West End Loop is actually Beck Road. Um, but let's just take a look at this map. You'll notice that this road that's called Beck Road on this map ha it has this little dip here. And that is true for this road as well. West End Loop has this dip and there's a lake right there. If we click back into this map and we go to the satellite map, there's a lake there. So I think this is the plot that we are looking for. And then it would be the southeast corner, southeast corner. Let's go back to our base map and let's map that. Um, so back over here, it looks like it's actually a pretty easy square. It goes from Kleinworth Road over to this road, Silverbow Road, and it starts at West End Loop, and it goes up as far as this little street. So let's see if that street is here. There it is. There's the little street. So it's just this corner or this square right here. So let's map that. So there is the plot of land that Silverbow School was on, but actually I want to just plot the southeast corner of the southeast corner of this. So we're going to do a new square. You know what, actually I'll just delete this and do like sort of a, a square there. It's pretty easy because this is a very simple plot of land. So there's the top, so half would be about here over halfway down over up so something that my family also told me when i was asking people if anyone who still lives in the area remembers where silverbow school was something they told me was that it was on the street that led from hoagland or from where the families lived which is down here on the street that led north to the cemetery. And if you'll notice, here is the Silverbow Lutheran Church and there's actually a cemetery there. That'll be later in our mapping adventures. And it's really true. It's If it was in the southeast corner of the southeast corner, that's this corner. So it was probably along this road or along this road. Let's just, I mean, we could guess maybe it was on the corner. On the street that led up to the church. So you'll find when you start mapping these communities based on memories, based on photos, you'll find that it is just the most magnificent feeling when the records that you find, the land patents that you find, perfectly align with what your family remembers. 
So I chose this photo. I think it was in my grandmother's album actually. And the caption that she wrote was um, at the Maypole at Silverbow School. Now we have, we know exactly where this photo was taken. It was taken on this plot of land right here. Another fun thing that you can do on Google My Maps is calculate distances. So for example, one of the memories that was written down by my grandmother's sister was she remembers the smell of cinnamon rolls and freshly baked bread as they walked home from school. And she also remembers walking to school in the tractor and the Model T tracks in the dust, which I think is just the coolest memory, because remember, this is the early 1900s. And we can actually sort of figure out how far that walk was. They lived on this property right here. You know, I actually don't know where the house was on this property. I'm sure I could figure it out because I think the house is still there. Um, if we look at the satellite map, there is a house right here. I'm not sure if I just mapped this incorrectly and this was also part of the property. Wherever the house is, we could just guesstimate it was on somewhere here on this property. We can go actually use this ruler and calculate the distances. So let's just say this is the house. You click it once and you can calculate how far it was to walk to school. So let's just say school is about right there. It was about a one mile walk to school. So now we have added one more spot to our little community here in the big flat in Montana. We have three homestead properties. We have the school where all the children attended. So make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and keep an eye out for the next part to this video series when we continue to map this community. Thanks for watching this video. If this was helpful for you, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post tutorials like this and also travel vlogs when I travel to the places that my ancestors lived because Romeo Roots is all about genealogy tourism. And also follow my Instagram page at Romeo Roots if you have an Instagram and that is something that interests you.